Hello and welcome to this tutorial of uh, Flying Circus. So this video is meant for um, you guys who are maybe new to World War One combat sims and are planning to get into it. Or it's maybe for you who have uh, flown Rise of Flight for a long time and uh, maybe thinking of transferring over to Flying Circus. So what are the difference? Well, first off, uh, Flying Circus is based on the Isle 2 uh, Sturmovik Forgotten Battles franchise. So, if you're familiar with that, you get the same graphics. It's the same game engine for that. And uh, sadly, you get lesser planes than Rise of Flight, and you just get one map. And um, the map is very huge and big, but uh, compared to Rise of Flight, it's, uh, that covers uh, almost the whole region. While this just uh, covered a part of a sector of it. So, and you also get uh, fewer planes here in a Flying Circus. It's uh, maybe seven, seven or eight planes in total. And the game costs $60. And don't forget that Rise of Flight is totally free. And you get two planes with it. One German and one Allied plane. And uh, it has tons of planes you can get later on. Uh, you might argue that, okay, but I have to pay for each plane. Yeah, but now one plane costs like a dollar or half a dollar sometimes when uh, it's on usually on sale every month so um, in terms of content and single player content rise of flight beats this one because flying circus has no single player whatsoever no campaigns no tutorial nothing you're just stuck with a multiplayer you can however fly like quick missions but that's just you set up a plane versus you versus him or them and that's it there's nothing more to it so, if you want to play some campaigns, you have to download some mods from the forum. Uh, so you get like a campaign for each side, but it's just like, uh, it's not many missions and uh, you usually, if you fly a lot, you'll be very quick uh, finished with it. You can also download a dynamic campaign generator for this, made by a guy called Pat Wilson. But uh, it's a bit glitchy and buggy, I tried it. and. Uh, Sometimes the planes just circle around when you're finished in a dogfight area, they don't return to base. Sometimes they don't follow you, don't follow orders. And it's like, it's it's not complete. So, compared to Rise of Flight where you have uh, tutorials, uh, many, many scripted missions, campaigns, many campaigns. And you have also dynamic campaign generator where you fly, fly through the whole war and it's like... Uh, you read newspaper articles every day. It's uh, Rise of Flight is so much more immersive. Uh, Flying Circus feels more like uh, a bit copy pasted in a way. Uh, it doesn't have the charm. It doesn't have the love, like attention to detail, like Rise of Flight had. And uh, but the pros of uh, uh, Flying Circus is that it has VR support and of course better graphics. And uh, everything looks bigger and more huge. The world feels bigger. You have longer draw distance the graphics are of course better but in a way i feel that uh, rise of flight it's it looks a bit more beautiful it's something with a color palette and uh, you, you sort of it feels more like a time machine in a way while this here feels more like uh, i don't know more like uh, actually a computer game in a some sense even though the flight model is still the equally good yeah so enough about that uh let's if you wanna if you have installed the game or uh, thinking about uh, getting it uh i would first recommend you you have a throttle a joystick uh rudder pedals and uh, head track device like track ER or vr support to make the game uh, much easier in combat for you because if, you, if you're going uh, up against other players usually all the players here have full gear and track ER or vr so if you if you just if you look around with your mouse button or something, you will be pretty toast in a dogfight. So let's set up the game. If you go to settings um, and key mapping, yeah. Also one more uh, thing, uh, since this is part of the Ill to Forgotten Battle franchise, you get keys for every plane in the game here, like World War Two planes and uh, World War One. So it's quite a mess. Or you need to search a lot for what to use, so I will just guide you through it. So first one to go is to pilot head control. Uh, pilot, zoom in, zoom out, get some buttons for that, map that. And you want to have, uh, go to planes. 
and you want to set up your pitch, roll and yaw. Pitch is basically back and forth on your joystick, moving your plane up and down. And roll is like uh, pull your joystick uh, left and right, so you roll the plane. And uh, jaw, this is the rudder pedal, so when you, it, it's like it's like pushing your plane left and right. Uh, it's very good uh, when you aim and in certain situation in a combat and uh, also getting your plane out of a spin. Uh, I can show that later in game uh, if you're not familiar with what uh, these do. So that's basically it for the plane settings. Then you want to go to engine. This is a bit more complicated. Uh, you want to have uh, engine start procedures, a button for that on your joystick, or keyboard E if you want. Uh, blip switch, some planes have this. Uh, the Camel has it, and I know the DR1 has it. Uh, it's basically when you when you click it, the engine stops, and when you, when you release it, the engine comes back on again. Useful for landing or in some certain dogfight situations. If you like, you if you like your engine in a turn, sometimes your plane can turn faster if you do it correctly. And uh, engine controls. This is throttle. Find axis for that on your joystick or throttle. I mean, and same with mixture. Need an axis for that. If not, you can use buttons. But I would recommend uh, have axis for that to get more precise of your mixture because a lot of the Allied planes have a manual uh, mixture, or all of them, I think. Uh, so you need this. The German planes usually have auto mixture, so you don't need to deal with that. Uh, and you need uh, already the shutters control axis or uh, water. Uh, I, I set the same axis for both because some planes have oil radiator and some have a uh, water radiator. I think just the World War One plane has water radiator, not sure, or some have oil, so I just put the same on both. So I have axis for that. That that is actually this. Um, uh, a third axis on my um, throttle there and you also want to set axis for the Fokker D7F engine altitude uh, throttle control just use the same as you use for a mixture here because this plane doesn't have any mixture axis and that's basically the higher you go up the, the more you crank it because uh, of the yeah it's like uh, how much air uh, your engine is getting uh, the high, the higher up you go in the air, the thinner air it is. So you need to adjust it according to your height. And it's very easy on this plane because if you have done, if you do it wrong, you hear like, like uh, you hear like it's cranking. But it can be good to crank it sometimes in dogfight because uh, when you crank it and you hear this sound, you you get higher RPMs and you can turn faster. So if if in a dire situation you can uh, just use it a few seconds and uh, to get out of a difficult situation yeah so that's basically it for the engine for the planes they, remember these are world war planes they are very simple that's why i prefer it too i'm so tired when i install a flight sim now and i have to set up millions of controls like i'm done with uh, high-tech jet sims like Falcon BMS or DCS it's uh, it's too much you know you have to you have to constantly play those games to be good at them and if you don't play it for months or you get a new computer and reinstall it's like you can sit there a whole day or two days just uh, learning everything over again so yeah I'm getting just tired of all the the control shit you have to deal with uh, those advanced fighters <coughs> so I'm gonna go to weapon controls Fire all guns, fire a joystick button for that. I have the first button on my joystick. And uh, drop bombs button for that. And uh, reload guns you need. If you if you get a weapon jam, like it, your guns don't shoot anymore, just click that uh, button and uh, reload one second and it's ready to go. And you need uh, buttons for the flare pistol and personal weapon. So take one for remove, personal weapon, flare pistol, and red flare, green flare, white flare. And personal gun, and also one for to shoot your personal weapon and flare. Flares are useful uh, to signal other players. Uh, like red flare means uh, you're in danger, or that you spotted other enemy planes. Green flare is just showing that you're friendly. Somebody's shooting at you. And uh, white flare is uh, if you're in a 
if your plane is damaged and you need to emergent land, you usually in, during the world run to shoot up this white flare to signal the enemy that okay you won, I'm done, you know, I'm finished. So then they le uh, let you be. And this actually uh, are used uh, on the server as well because um, if you shoot if you shoot a plane and it starts to smoke and uh, you see it diving down and flying towards their their side or to their home plate or home airfield call it whatever uh, and you and you still chase them and shoot them and kill them they get pretty upset and mad at you because in this game you have uh, online stats on a uh, on the server has a uh, special stats that you can follow your player how long you survived you know and how long kill streak you have while being alive and you get more score doing that so many players on the servers they try to keep their pilot uh, alive as long as they can because uh, it gives them higher score and better streaks etc so some take it very seriously uh, like never shoot a plane that's landing or never shoot a plane that's on a runway uh, taking off it's it's uh, considered cheating and very bad sportsmanship so yeah also the German have uh, parachutes and the allies don't have it so uh, <laughs> you can't shoot you can actually shoot a parachute of a German pilot just jumped out and uh, the par the parachute gets destroyed and he falls to the ground, killing him, of course. So if you do that, they get super mad. Uh, if you do that, you see in the chat, uh, hey, this guy shot me, he shot my parachute, uh, asshole, and yeah, you know. So, but it's very difficult to see who do it because the the server has no information of who killed who. So usually people who do that they don't admit they're doing it, but it's it's a bit funny. To read sometimes they, people get very upset in this game when you do bad things so that's basically all the controls you can click accept I'll click uh, cancel since I've already done all this I don't want to fuck something up if I did it and uh, let's go to multiplayer you go dogfight and uh, you need to find uh, flying circus flug park now it's empty because now it's the middle of the day in the middle of the week when I'm recording this Nobody's playing at that hour usually. Uh, usually they play in the evenings. Then you have 20 to 30 players. Or in the weekends, Saturday, Sunday, or Friday evening, it's very full. So I'll just click on it. And you can see here's the stats page that you can log into and make your pilot. It needs to be the same name. You have to have the same name uh, there as your in game in Ailto Sturmavik pilot name. And you also have a Discord server where you can join each side and talk and be strategic. It's pretty fun. So I'll just click join server. <coughs> and the loading takes a bit of time. Even if you have a super fast computer, the loading can take quite some time to get into the server. And uh, it's just one server for this game. It's. Um, It's just one server for this game. So now we're logging in, and there's some useful information on the right here. You don't have to read all now. You can read this uh, like uh, different missions you can do. You can do recon missions, bombing missions. Basically, the server is uh, like a dynamic server. It uh, it runs for a few hours and before it restarts. So you can uh, destroy airfields, take over, yeah. A lot of things, things you can do here. So, but one fun thing is that you can repair, refuel, and rearm at if you land at a base. If you land close to a truck, you can do that. Or actually, I tried. I, if you, even if you're like 200 meters away, you still can uh, refuel, rearm. You just have to find a landing field that has a repair truck. Like if you start in air start airfield, that means you start a few hundred meters over the ground, just taking off. So you don't have to take off yourself, but that airfield, if you try to land on it, it doesn't have the refuel uh, repair stuff or truck. So be aware of that. So if you want to land and repair, you need to find one of these uh, airfields here. So just pick airfield, take this one. Here you can see there's a number in front of each plane, like a uh, 6x Sopich Camel. It means that if you take this plane, a flight of the... Um, flight of the... To the front and uh, get shot, kill or crash. Then, then this airfield held, you lose one plane. So to keep 
an airfield f still filled with planes, you need to land your plane at the airfield when you're finished. So if you exit the server, if you just exit it mid over here, then uh, actually the airfield loses a plane. So beware of that. And you also see like a uh, sword blinking here and red plane with two. It means that there are two enemy planes somewhere in this area. It's I think it's a couple of kilometers around it in the circle, under like a radar. It also will show up if they're close to the one of the airfields here. So then we're gonna go to the setup and I take around 24% fuel. You don't need 100, the plane will be too heavy and slow and you can, even with this 18% or 24% fuel, you can fly for hours. So you don't need to fly for six hours, no missions or you will not survive that long anyway. Uh, and um, modifications, enlarge window, it's good to have this, uh, this in the middle and you can see through it, it's bigger, better in dogfight. I uh, don't use this site, but it's a pretty good site, uh, you get, you have to raise your pilot seat a bit, or your pilot's height. Uh, the, the good thing with that is that you get more, um, you see more over your plane, so you get more uh, good view of the combat situation. But I think the site is a bit ugly and too big and, and clunky, so it's taking a, a lot of a lot of my view in front, so I don't use it. And you don't have to deal with adjusting the pilot site uh, there. And I don't touch the convergence because the guns are already aiming straight forward, so it's no point. I tried to change the conversion, but nothing happens. The bullets still meet at the same same place. Ammunition, uh, you can have bombs of course, but um, I don't use that, because uh, this is not a typical bomber plane, it's a fighter plane, and when you use it, your plane gets too heavy and slow, and yeah. If you meet enemy pilot, uh, enemy fighters and having bombs, just drop your bombs immediately, or else you can't dogfight all, uh, almost. There, and uh, paint schemes, you can have custom skins too, but you have to download them from the um, forums. Il to Stormic forums. It's very easy tutorial, just it's a program you automatically install skins for you, so you can have thousands of skins here. The thing is that if you want to see other players' skins, you have to have the same skin as they have on your computer. So just be aware of that. But you have some custom skins that are official, so let's choose one. The good thing about custom skins is that if you see a custom skin, you know it's uh, a player compared to the default one. Also another thing that you see is that if you see a streamer, a streamer is basically like a cloth hanging down from uh, your wing. So if you see a plane with a streamer, that's also a player. AI don't have a streamers and not scarves either. So, and on the Allied, the streamers are on the right side, the Germans, the streamers are on the left side. So that's a good indication uh, for spotting enemy planes. So yeah, now we're basically ready to start playing, so start. And you want to make sure that everything is working, you can check your aileron, joystick left, left and right, see it's working, joystick back and forward, this is for controlling your plane up and down, and the rudder for controlling mostly on the runway and also in air in some dog fighting situation or getting out of spin. So yeah, now you can start the engine. I press the mapped button on my joystick or you can press the E button on your keyboard. Throttle full, mixture full. Here you see the throttle mix. And mixture is full. I, I took the throttle back now so I don't start uh, taking off. So yeah. And also in the down left corner you can see like four dots on the HUD that's uh, the symbols for rearming, refueling, repairing your plane or heal your damaged pilot. <coughs> so if I press right control and A now I will rearm my plane and if I also press right control and R I will refuel it. The problem with uh, if you choose refueling that it it will refuel your plane until you are 100% fuel. So if you like to fly with 20 or 18%, then you shouldn't uh, refuel your plane a long time. You should first rearm, and when you rearm, you just 
press control R to refuel and you just stay there for yeah, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, then you take off. Then it will stop refueling. I think it stops refueling when you turn on your engine. So, just be aware of that. So, let's take off. Uh, full throttle. Using my rudder to steer the plane. Uh, take the mixture a bit back. Get more speed. Push joystick forward. Just leave it here until I feel the planes is getting light and I slightly pull back on the joystick. So let's head to the front, like there's an action up north of us, so let's fly north. The reason I'm using HUD uh, compass is because the compass here, as you can see, I can't see shit. Almost. So yeah. Well, you can't see the north thing down there, but it's like... If you want to look at it very quick, uh, it takes some time, so I just like the, to have the compass and the HUD. It's also very useful for uh, if you're if you're in a dogfight over the over the mud there, over by the front, and you're circling a lot, you can be confused which way is home. So if you want to uh, fly home quickly, like evade then it's, the compass is very useful to have, so I recommend having it up. Also for new new players out there, I would recommend um, going into settings, basic options, and turn on in-game messages. Technical and tips, have this on. I think it's on by default after you install the game. And as you can see to my right screen, when I move my throttle, it will say 100% uh, throttle, and you can see the mixture. And it, it's good for uh, not mapping that showing that you have uh, everything set up correctly and that your uh, axes are not re uh, reversed or something. And it also will save your plane is damaged, leaking oil or fluid and things like that. So in the beginning I would just, uh, you, can, you should have it on. I can just leave it on now so you can maybe see if something happens to my plane. As you can see, compared to Rise of Flight, uh, clouds look better, everything looks like huge, big, you can look for miles and miles away. It's uh, You get a very sense of uh, that you're in a big environment. The mud is way de more detailed too, you know, you see explosions, firefighting down there, there are tanks, soldiers fighting, uh, cities, Every it's like, uh, it feels more like uh, it's a real war going on. So, yeah. The downside with uh, Flying Circus actually is that I use if you use a joystick with the force feedback and you look around with the track gear headset, you can see that it's a bit choppy movements. So, it, it almost like it feels like your game is not running smooth, but when you look now, when I move now, there you see it's totally smooth like uh, over 100 fps so but when you look around it's choppy and it's actually on the forum it's uh, people found out is if you have a joystick with force feedback this happens so if i use a uh, non-force feedback joystick uh, the move movements will be very smooth so yeah anyway uh, when you come to the front you should start to look for flak uh, flak is basically anti-aircraft guns shooting shooting up at them and it will explode shells in the air and that's uh, emit uh, black smoke like black dots in the sky so you should look for that and um, we should be close to the um, fighting area now there are three planes here so I think since we don't see any flak uh, around us we should uh, actually fly a bit down to see if we can see some fighters down below and it's very hard to spot fighters d below you because of the mud they like yeah, they get lost in the it's like a camouflage almost so you just almost have to fly really low some players are very good at spotting planes underneath them uh, uh, I'm not <laughs> so I usually just fly down Also remember that your mixture needs to be set up so that you see your RPM levels, they are like maximum, so just adjust, 
adjust your mixture until you see your RPMs are increasing in a way and then you're just release it there it's like 80% you see there in my mixture so useful information and you have to adjust your mixture the higher up you get the, the higher up you get the less mixture you need okay yeah we see a plane now it's close to the balloon but there's no flak there on our side so I don't think it's an enemy it can be an enemy but I don't think it is because they will usually shoot flak at it and it's very high up so let's just keep uh, looking and if you press O you can see your map I mapped it to my joystick because I press it a lot um, and we should be I think I should zoom a bit more in because uh, to get more details here where we are so what I usually do is that I navigate with cities and lakes so here we see a big city and uh, that is that this city over here so we are we are somewhere around here so we should be close to the enemy uh, planes so still not seeing any flak so going a bit down and also remember that your RPM should not increase you see the 60 number 1600 RPMs your engine should not exceed that when you dive so when you dive down you see blip switch or you can just adjust your throttle I like to adjust my throttle so I'm not getting over 1600 because if you do that em engine will be damaged also the camel is not nerfed here like it is in Rise of Flight so in Rise of Flight it's a bit slower here is not nerfed so it's very easy to damage your engine by revving too much in Rise of Flight you could uh, yeah there they are there you see flak and enemy planes so they're usually AI planes are usually fighting pretty low on the server so I shouldn't have fl flown so high up forgot that so not sure what they're doing they're pro probably in a dogfight with some other planes and the AI here do random missions they are uh, bombing recon or just patrolling the border so on the server there's always something to do you can and uh, it tracks your score and pilots everything so you can if there's no players online you can still have a cool time you know shooting other planes or uh, bo do bombing or recon missions etc so uh, so yeah if you want something new and you have a beefy good computer and uh, you want to have like, some new world war one experience i definitely recommend getting flying circus uh, but there are, like I said earlier, there are some pros and cons about it compared to the original Rise of, uh, Rise of Light, so... But here you basically see how it is on an empty server. Oi! Ah, server connection lost. That actually happens a lot lately, I don't know why. Uh, there, it wasn't like that before. It, I flew it yesterday a bit and it was... Constantly server connection error. Uh, the other player said it didn't. They didn't have any problem with it, so it might be something on my Apple's uh, stuff. I have a new computer and Windows 11, and I bloody hate it. I hate Windows 11. It it thinks everything uh, is a virus, and it deletes some files. Uh, like I had some old music uh, prog software programs legally that I bought, and I wanted to install it and. No, it's a virus. It's a virus. I tried to block it, but no, it's a virus. I, and it, it started to delete files on my install. So it's like, what the hell? And uh, I think that can be some issues with this game here too. Like Because uh, before, I never got a uh, connection error almost. It, it, I just got it if the server shut down and everybody was kicked out, of course. But now, lately, it's a lot of uh, connection error. So it's a bit annoying. So... Uh, let's try again. We can just take off from here. Uh, do a quick. Um... Yeah. Also, downside. Every time you go into the server, you have to, or it's a new game, you have to set up your plane. Uh... You have to set up your plane again. In Rise of Flight, it remembered all your settings. Also, in Rise of No, Aldis. Oh, okay. 
I'll, I'll just uh, sing now. Yeah. Just make sure. Yeah, all good. And yeah, we come right to the enemy planes now that we were before. So not too bad. And also one uh, bad thing about this is that you can't uh, set up curse for your... Uh, what the heck? Oh, yeah. I'm not gonna engage that fighter because that's a bomber with a gunner. And the gunners here are insanely good. So, yeah. uh, One uh, thing I was about to say is that... Um, I forgot it, damn it. Yeah, your controls. Uh, in Rise of Flight, you can set up curves for your uh, joystick so that it automatically, like, it was like minus 10% uh, curve. So that means that it, your joystick was like automatically pushing forward. So you don't have to constantly push your joystick forward to keep it straight. Like in Flying Circus, you can't do that. It's more realistic, of course, because they didn't have that in World War uh, One, but. Some planes you really have to push your joystick forward a lot to keep it straight and uh, for long fly runs it can be tedious so that's also one thing that's better with Rise of Flight, you could do that. Also the AI planes are very, they fly very strange, very twitchy. So a bit the Mercen killer in that one. You can easily tell it's AI right away how it flies, it's like twitch back and forward with its wings ah, oh, he was on fire also one bad thing is that plane disappear mid-air if the pilot dies now he jumped out and uh, yeah, pretty cool but if, if you kill a pilot and you see the plane like falling towards the ground, it, the plane disappears after 20 seconds. I, I think they should remove that because it's cool to see planes, you know, burning, uh, crashing all the way to the ground. And having a plane disappear me there is like just to remind you, oh, like, oh, you're playing a game. Let's chase those guys. That's the DR1. Oi. Somebody's shooting at me. Oh yeah, another false. Medium. Yeah, it's pretty cool to dogfight there. It's, it's fun, addictive. I could do it all day. DR1 playing with a lot of drag, but very good in uh, low speeds and can tur out turn any plane if you're a good pilot with it. It's super uh, dangerous to uh, engage if you don't know what you're doing. But this is AI pilot, so it will not be any problem. But play good players with the DR1, uh, you need to. Special tactics to win over them. Gun jump, reload the guns. I think I killed him. Yeah. I don't know if he goes. So, yeah, there are some pros and cons to this and uh, Rise of Light. Also, one big con is that if you get shot a lot in the wings. Or yeah, your plane can o can almost not take three or four G pull. Then uh, the, then you'll break your wings. 
And uh, so if you're in a dogfight and your wings get shot up a lot, just don't bother to dogfight, your wings will just break. And the sadly this problem is usually on the allied planes, not the German planes. So he's in trouble. So usually when you go online and see people playing, most people fly the German planes for this reason. So there's always more German fighters than allied fighters and if they don't fix the damage model soon, they're gonna kill this game, I think. Because people are so fed up with losing just because their wing breaks for no reason. Like, 3-4 bullet hits in your wing and it breaks. You know, it's this big uh, wood uh, piles here that keeps your wings intact. Not, not if there come some small holes in your main wing. That's just... it just gives you... It can damage your controls, of course, or it can make the plane go a little bit slower, but... It shouldn't bre break your wings. It's uh, very unrealistic. almost stole my plane. That's good with having a force feedback joystick, you can feel it when your plane is about to stall. Because sometimes you don't know how high speed you are when you're in a dogfight. Uh oh, don't let him shoot you. Oh, he got on fire. Yeah, you see? <laughs> plane disappeared because the pilot got killed. And that's... Also... That never happened in Rise of Flight. The, you always see the plane uh, crash to the ground. And you see the parts staying there a while before they disappear, so... If anybody make made this game see this video, please fix that, okay? It's so it looks so stupid on a plane disappearing me there. Don't have much bullet left, but we can see if we can take that albatross. Or if he's not dead already, no. Where did you go? Yeah, no. Ah, oh, there you are. I'm a bit rusty, I haven't flown this for seriously for many years. Or one year. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I got some hits. And let's get closer to the mud or the front. The, you hear the explosions, pretty cool. He fell apart. Like that is very unrealistic. The wings just breaking like that because of some bullets. And uh, the Albatross is the weakest German planes with that. So that's the main reason why German, uh, no, the players who fly German planes, they fly the Fokker D7F or D7 or the DR1 because those don't break as easily. So yeah, let's uh, we can land now. And show you the rearm stuff. So let's find out where we are. Let's look at the mud. Okay, there's the big city. There's, the, and yeah, we should fly uh, south, almost south west a bit to get to our airfield. What you should actually do when you escape the front is fly down and very quick but if you're not in any danger you should stay a bit up so you get 
so you can navigate to your airfield I think it's over there there's a city yeah we see a city on the map south so the airfield should be just uh, a bit east of it on the map maybe I'm looking at the wrong place but uh, we'll just fly towards it and see so I think the airport should be somewhere around here. Yeah, I think I see it. It's very far away. Yeah, I think it's straight ahead there, yeah. Just then we can get some more speed and make sure we don't exceed 1600 RPM. So there. It's always good to fly low and uh, fast when you fly away from the front in, in case somebody's chasing you. It's also harder to spot you if you're low. If someone is chasing you too, you can also also look for flak. Because if there are flak around me now, that means there's enemy planes around there. And if you fly to the other side of the front, uh, flak will shoot at you. So stay a bit high up. If you're very close to the ground and uh, enemy gunner shoot at you, then most likely will damage your plane. Yeah, there's the airfield. I was a bit off course there. So, how you see it is usually like a brown patch and some grey buildings. And uh, it's also close to a small, a few houses there. Can't even call it a village, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So. Let's look at the uh, ground uh, graphics a bit. Looks pretty nice. Definitely more detailed than uh, Rise of Light, but there's something about Rise of Light, the color palette. I like it more. Here is like, I don't know, it's. It looks too muddy, this game, I think, in a way. It's like Rise of Light has more color and. I don't know, it looks just more charming in a way. So, but here, this is more. Uh, realistic looking I think and also depends on the time of the day and now we have a lot of clouds over us so it's not much sun showing up also sometimes the weather effects is amazing if it's raining a bit and the cloud and the sun you see like sun beams through the clouds uh, it's very good depends on the time of day and weather so yeah the clouds are definitely way way better than uh, Rise of Light. They have huge clouds and uh, they're different looking and yeah. Uh, so there's airfield. Uh, I, this is a bad place to land but I can try to land after this uh, after this fence here. Just make sure I'm not hitting anything. Yeah it looks good. So throttle all the way back, just blip switch in, killing the engine, and uh, yeah. Yeah, good landing. And uh, we can try see if you find a supply truck, and if it, if there is a supply truck here. I don't see anything. Oh, you know, there it is. So, but if you stop your engine now, we should be able to um, refuel. Control R for refuel. No, I think the propeller needs to be stopped completely. Yeah. No, oh, not working. Arm is, is working, but not refueling. Maybe I need to be closer to the truck. No, it's Control F. Sorry. Control F is fuel, and Control A is uh, rearm. I think. Yeah.
Uh, don't need, don't need more fuel now. Oh, there, uh, there it says in fact, uh, fuel reserve, eighty three liter, fifty percent. Oh yeah. So it's good to have this information on because uh, when you refuel, then you see how much fuel you have. So now I have way too much fuel on my plane. It's like fifty percent. It's very heavy. No point having that much fuel. Uh, it's repairing landing gear, so my landing was uh, a bit hard, I think. I touched it down a bit too hard. So, yeah, but uh, that was uh, Flying Circus, so I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, if you have any questions, just write it in the comment section below, and I see you in the next one.